Okay, good e afternoon, everyone. Dr. Nat here. So we are continuing with orthographic writing. Last time we talked about orthographic projection and we figured out that actually the multi-view is based off projections of points, projections of lines, projection of surfaces on planes. And then uh, sometimes it becomes foreshortened. Sometimes it tells you the true length. Sometimes it does not. So it is very important to know that you have the front view, this, the right side view, the left side view, the top view, bottom view, rear view, but the one that is most commonly used is front, side, and also top, right? Only three. And when it is not necessary to have all three, you can also present your uh, multi-view in two views, which is front or side or front or top, whichever is important, okay? So today we're gonna to learn how to draw orthography or how to write. Okay, so today we are covering view selection, alignment of views, uh, orthographic writing steps and basic dimensioning and also tangency and intersection. Not sure if we can, or oh, we have two hours. Yes, I think we can. Okay, so view selection. So orient the object to the best position relative to a glass box and select the front view I need to do the slideshow, sorry. Okay, so select the front views and select the adjacent view. When you have an object, the first thing that you want to do is uh, which one should be the front view? And I told you before, the tip was that you pick the side with the most feature, just like our face. Uh, if I give you a head, I'm not gonna give you a head. If you look at your head and you decide which one is your front, you're gonna choose the one with the most features, right? You're not gonna you know, draw your back of the, your head. So you're gonna start with this one as your front. So same case here, select the side with the most features and then select your adjacent view or your side view. I need to put myself over here, okay. So the object should be placed in its natural position. For example, you have a car and you want to um, present it in um, orthographic projection or orthographic drawing, right? But uh, instead of putting the car, um, putting the car, how do, I, how do I visualize this? Instead of putting the tires of the car on the road, you flip the car and you start with the front view where the car is flipped over. So that's not a natural position. So natural position is uh, how the object should be placed naturally. Lah. For example, another example would be, um, what else? A car is a good example, I think. I think you get the idea, right? So the object should present its features in actual size and shape in orthographic view. Unless you cannot, then you scale it down or you scale it up. If it's too small, you scale it up. If it's too large, you scale it down. We're gonna learn that in a bit. Okay, so here this um, object fits in our glass box. It's just the right size. It's not too small, it's not too big. And here they chose the side with the most features as the front view. And then you have the top view over here and then you have the right side view or you can just call it side. And here is an instance where they put the object at an angle, which is obviously not a natural position. And you can see that it is quite um, not very, this is not a good uh, drawing, okay? When you look at it, you, know, you already know it's not a good drawing because you don't know the true length. Um, and all of it is just 3D. We want our drawing to be in 2D, right? Just like this one over here. So this is not a good uh, orthographic drawing. It's wrong, in fact. So this is a good one, and this is not a good one. Okay, moving on. So step two, select the front view. The object's longest dimension should be presented as the width. And I told you before, front view, banyak, uh, the one that with the most features. And the longest dimension, you should consider it as the width. The first choice, here you have a car. Here you have a second choice. Now, you, when you look at a car, you don't know which one is the front side. Of course, the right, this side also has a lot of features. This side also has a lot of features, so you don't know which one to pick. Pick the one with the longest dimension. For example, I'm gonna choose this one because it is the most, it is the longest one. And then if you try to draw the other views of this car, it would look like this. This is the side view and this would be the top view. 
And if I were to choose this one as the front, this will be my top view and this will be my side view. Of course, they give me the same views, but there is a difference. The, the first drawing with more space and the second drawing with less uh, space. So if you were to pick um, the front view, pick the one with the most features and if um, the, the object has a lot of features all around, pick the one with the widest dimension as your width. So here they use less, they waste less space. So this is a good choice. Of course, it's not, it, does, it doesn't mean that this is wrong, but it's just not the best, okay? We always go for the best practice. Okay, so adjacent views or side views that are projected from the selected front view should appear in its natural position. Of course, this is wrong because this is not in its natural position. Inappropriate. Okay, so this one is an object that we can actually draw, I mean, for our level. So choose the view that has have the fewest number of hidden lines. Number three, tip number three. First one was pick the most features. Second one, pick the widest dimension as your width. Third tip was uh, choose a side with the fewest number of hidden lines, okay? So if I were to draw the back of my head, there's a lot of hidden lines, so I don't want that. I want the one with the most visible lines. Okay, so let's look. So this is um, the viewer or the, that's you. So this is what they're seeing. This is the front view. Okay, let's look at this front view. So we have a hole. So we should have a center line. Okay, we have it. Center line is short and long dash. Remember that. And then we have a hole over here. It's not in the same plane as the first hole. It's an, in a different plane. So you can't really see the hole, but it is presented by the hidden line and a center line. You see the hidden line and also the center line. Obviously, it's a hole. Um, yeah, okay. And then you revolve the object. You have another hidden line. The hidden line must be joined at the visible line. Unless it's an extension, do not join it. Leave a gap. So this is a good one. And this is an inappropriate view for to choose as a, your front view because it has more hidden lines. Well, the difference is just one, but this is the best practice, the good one. Okay, moving on. Step three, select an adjacent view. Choose the fewest number of hidden lines. Previously was also adjacent view. No, wait, was it? I think it was adjacent view as well. Oh, this was front view still, okay. For adjacent view, it's telling you pick the one, pick the view with the fewest number of lines as well after you choose the front view. Okay, so that's your object here. You have a center line, a hole, hole representing this guy over here and a hidden line, you know, it, this is also a, a hole with a center line. Okay, so compared from right side to left side view, they are telling us to choose right side view because this guy has less hidden lines compared to the left side view. So this will be our adjacent view for our multi view. Okay, always go for uh, the most, the least hidden lines, always. Okay, moving on. So this is, this is supposed to be top view. Okay, again, um, they are comparing top views. No, this is side view or top view. Wait. This is top view. So they're trying to determine which one should be the top view. Is it this side or down here? You can choose the, the rear side as your top view. You can, but it's not necessarily the best one. So let's see. The top view has um, two hidden lines over here. And for the rear view, you have one, two, three, four, four hidden lines. So obviously we should choose this one as our top view. This um, title is wrong. It should be select the top view with the least hidden lines, okay? 
Okay, next one. Select and choose the minimum number of views that can represent the major features of the object. As I told you before, it's not necessary to have all three. Sometimes you can present all the features in two. But in this case, I think we need three, do we? Let's see. Okay, so it's telling us this side, we need the dimension of this side and it is reflected in our adjacent side or adjacent view. So our adjacent view is very necessary. And the, the radius of this hole or the diameter of this hole is represented by the top view. And it cannot be, I think it can be represented over here as well. Okay. The hole's location can be specified on the same view. So easy to understand. Mm, I would say that the front view already gives us this information, but okay. Ah, okay. So this front view does not tell us um, the distance from this edge to the hole. So this is what we're missing. We know the diameter of the hole, but we don't know how far it goes. Okay, so the top view tells us that. So yes, it becomes necessary. Okay, so what is this? So if we were to try to imagine where the hole is using the front view or the adjacent view, we can't really tell uh, where to draw it. Maybe it's at the end, maybe it's at the front. We don't know for sure that the hole is at the center or like it's symmetrical, right? So by, from the front view and the side view, I'm not able to tell whether the hole is symmetrical, like really at the center or like ujongke, tak tahu. So we need this top view. So the top view is necessary. Okay, next object. Okay, so this looks like, I don't know, it's a doorknob with a hole. Let's just call it that. Okay, so this is what they've given us. Uh, this is the front view and this is the top view. Okay, so and it's telling us there is not enough space for dimensioning. Yes, we are wasting a lot of space. This is not ideal. This is a poor drawing. Okay. So this is a good drawing. So instead of using, just now it was top view, but now they chose side view. Mm, they want us to choose side view because it wastes less space and also we have space for dimensioning. Well, that is true. But you can also scale it. So again, um, I'm telling you AutoCAD is very subjective as long as it makes sense and you can justify yourself why you choose a certain parameter or why you choose your drawing to be like this and this. It should be okay. Okay, so don't, I mean, it's not rigid. But the one that wastes less space is obviously the best choice. Okay, so this is good. So we have another object, it's a triangle block. This is our front view. So our front view looks like a rectangle. So if I were to present this view to you and I ask you, hey, can you draw me the uh, isometric, isometric drawing of this object? And I just give you this front view. What will you draw me? You would draw me a rectangle block, rectangular block, right? Which is wrong. So we need more views. Of course, this front view tells us the width and the height, but it doesn't tell us the dimension, sorry, the depth. So we need more. So this top view gives us the depth. And, and is that enough? Are we able to specifically draw a rectangular block using these two views? Let's see. Are we able? I think not. So this will mislead us to drawing a rectangular block or a rectangular block with a fillet. This also works. Okay, so this is one plane. One plane and from the top, this is what you see, yeah. Okay, 
So you need your adjacent view or your side view to tell you that this is indeed a triangle block. So three views is uh, necessary for the size description and also the shape. If you only have the front view and the top view, it only tells you the size, but it doesn't tell you the shape, okay? It tells you the depth, it tells you the width, the height, but it doesn't tell you the shape and you still can draw wrongly. What's this? RSV, right side view. Yes. What does that mean? Okay, so another one. This is a flat type of object. If you have any questions, you can interrupt me. So this is a flat type of object. Uh, again, we typically for the front view, we'll choose the one with the most features, right? So let's see what they choose. So this is what they chosen, but it's not the front view. So we have this guy over here. The center line denotes our hole. Another center line, another center line, which because we have an arc over here, it's almost like a hole. So we do need that center line. And we have a fillet, a fillet, a fillet. This is not a fillet. This is an arc tangent. Um, tangent, tangent arc. Forgot the, uh, the code for the AutoCAD. This is fillet, I think. Fillet, because we have two edges. Fillet lah. And this is the, these two views provide only information about the part thickness. Correct. You get the length. We do get the length and we do get the thickness. From this side, we don't get the length. We get the thickness and depth. This is unnecessary. Let's see what they conclude. So you, when you have something like this, this is almost redundant, right? Because when you present this front view, let's just call it front view for now. When you present this front view, you already know we have this depth over here. We'll call it depth. Then we know the length over here. So this guy and this guy is redundant because we already have the information over here. The only thing that we're missing is the thickness from this figure. Okay, so what you can do is, since this guy is, these two views are redundant, what you can do is, you just label it like this. This is a leader line. It's called a leader line. We're going to learn about this later. Leader line, and you put a note. One, uh, one millimeter thick. Or in this case, one thick. You, If your dimensioning in your AutoCAD is millimeter, then... By right, you already know it's one millimeter. Okay, so this is also possible to do. You give me a front view and you feel like the side view and the rear view is unnecessary. You can just label it like this. Okay, what about a cylindrical shape part? Okay, so here they are choosing this side as your front, front view. This side, left side view as your adjacent view and the top part as your top part lah, okay? So here we can see that we have redundant information here. Let's see what they see, see? So this is redundant, repeat. You're repeating the front view again. So this is unnecessary. So I can just present this object with two views. I have my diameter of the circle. I have my length and I have this side is going to be aligned with my diameter and I'm good to go. It's already, I already know it's a cylindrical. I won't make a mistake. Okay. And again, circle has center line. This center line denotes that the circle is over here. Okay. And since we don't have another circle inside, it's not a hole. So it's a block. What is CL? Oh, center line, sorry. Infer from center line. What? This is unnecessary, but I, I want to know it. Okay, yes, it is unnecessary. But if, if we want to put it there, you can. But we already know that the diameter is this much. I already said it just now. The diameter is this much, and this is a block. Since there's no hole, then that side view was not necessary, actually but you can have it if you want. 
Okay, but when we have a hole, I would say that the side view is very important. Let's see. Right. So they infer the hole here from the hidden line and the center line. So the center line extends from here to here, which means that the diameter of the hole extends to the back. So we don't need, we don't need it. Wait, do we know? Oh, we have this side, yeah. This is the visible line. This is representing this guy. Hidden line is the hole. So I want this side. I like having the circle. Okay, but you already have enough information from one view. So this is the best practice. Okay, moving on. Uh, two view drawing. Two view drawing, there exists an identical view. Therefore, you can just use two views. Another example, why am I showing you a lot of objects and their also graphic projection? Because I want you to expose you to how you can draw later on. Because for your projects, you will need to know this and for your tests as well. Tests, okay? Okay, so there exists an identical view. Uh, let's see. Here you can see that, let me, this dash or like the plus sign tells you that it is a hole, but a very, very small hole, okay? Typically we see the short and the long dash as our center line, but here we see it like a plus sign. And that's okay. If you have it in your AutoCAD like that, it's okay because the hole is very small and it becomes like that. And then we have the hidden line. Sorry, this is a center line because it's a short and long dash. This is a visible line. So what I'm inferring from this center line, no, this is not a center line. Why is it like this? Yeah. This is a hidden line. Mm. Okay, visible, visible, betul. This one we already accounted for. What is this supposed to be? I'm not sure. I need to figure this out. Okay, so let's see the side view. This is a center line. And then we have the center line over here. This is our hole, a hole. And from this side, we only have, we only can see this side and this, no, we have this one and this one. We're supposed to have four hidden lines. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we have four pairs. One pair over here, this side and this side is one hole, this side and this side is one hole. And this one and this one is one hole. And then you can see that the center line for this guy, for this pair, right? This pair, the center line is one. This is here. And this is, this is very confusing. The top part, okay, does settle. This one and this one overlaps. Repeat. Okay, wait, wait. I'm not done yet. Center line, tengah, besar. Do we have another hole inside? This is our visible line. This is our hole. One, two. This is quite big compared to the bottom part. I'm not sure if they have another hole inside. Let's see. One, two, three. So we are assuming that they overlap completely. We're assuming that they are on a horizontal plane. So we are seeing just three. One, two, three. This is the hole for this guy over here. Okay, so that makes sense. But I still don't know what this is. Is it supposed to connect all the uh, circles? I don't know because it's not in the book that I'm referring to. I'm going to check back on this one with other lecturers if they know. Okay, so let's move on with this one. So here they are telling us that this view over here is a repeat. Well, of course, it looks the same, exactly the same. So we don't need it. So we can just say, we can just pick this one or this one, whichever is the same. Okay, and then the other one, the third view has no significant 
contours of the object. Let's see. Here we have a hole that extends to the back. And then we have another hole here and another hole here. I'm expecting a center line here, a center line here, center line here. If I'm looking from this side, I'm expecting a visible line that looks like this. And from the top, I cannot exactly imagine the symmetrical part. So the front view is very, very much important. Let's see. So the front view, okay. We have the hidden lines to show that there is a hole going in inside the object. And then from the side, um, I have one hole over here. I'm supposed to have another hole at the back, but it overlaps, so you can't see it here. And if I use the top view, I can see, oh, there is two holes and I have this side, which represents the hole that goes inside here. So this guy becomes unnecessary. It doesn't even tell me that there is another hole at the back, just like the other one. So we are good without this figure, without this view. But if you draw it, uh, I won't penalize you because you are giving me extra information as long as you don't uh, give me less information, okay? So going above and beyond is better than having less. But of course, these two views is already the best practice. Okay, so next one is, this is the same case. The third view has no significant contours of the object, let's see. So they are choosing this side as the front view. We have a center line going on here. That's your hole. And then we have this guy. Um, this is supposed to be a visible line. And behind this, I, from this side, I cannot see that there is a hole at the back. So they represent this with a hidden line. Okay. And then we have the hole that extends. And this one tells us the chamfer. Chamfer over here, chamfer over here. If you still, if you guys still remember what chamfer is, it's a triangle. You cut out a triangle. It has equal distance. Okay, moving on. So let's see. This is our front view, and then this is our top view. It tells us we have a circle. It's our center line, and now I'm sure that I have a hole here. Previously, I just saw a hidden line. I was unsure. What does this mean? But from the top view, I know. Okay, so this guy has. Uh, like a cut out from here. And I confirm that this is chamfer. And this hidden line tells me, oh, this guy is from here. Is it? Yeah. This is the hidden line. From the top, we cannot see the line that extends from here. So this is why we have the hidden line. Okay, so is this necessary? I Let's see. Chamfer, 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 chamfer. Hole is from the side. Mm, I think this is from this side. And then we have our hole. Oh, no, this is not the hole. This is the cut out part. Okay, so this is the rectangular block over here. Hidden line and center line tells me there should be a hole. Doesn't really tell me the depth that the block, the cut out block should go. I would say this is unnecessary. Okay, and with, with these two views, I already know how to draw this object isometric view. This is orthographic. This is isometric or exonometric. Okay. Okay, moving on. Was that okay for everyone? Was I going too fast? Yeah. All right, so moving on. Projection systems. So there are two types of projection systems. There is a first angle system and also a third angle system. For Malaysia, we use the third angle system. Wait, no. Typically, we use the third angle system, but it's not ISO standard. So the third angle system is um, used in Canada, USA, Australia, Japan, Thailand, and UK. So if you were to ask me, uh, I typically see drawings, AutoCAD drawings in third angle system, even though Malaysia is supposed to use ISO standard. But for units, we do use the ISO standard, which is millimeter and meters. Okay, so first angle system is used by the European U, European country and ISO standard. Did I, did I switch this up? First angle, first quadrant, let's see. 
Okay, so what does first angle mean and what does third angle mean? So you are the viewer over here. Remember when you have a circle, you can divide the circle into four quadrants. But in this case, this is not a circle. It is, let's assume it's a square. Okay, we divide this square into four quadrants. Quadrants ni maksudnya satu per empat lah. So this is the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, the fourth quadrant. Okay. Uh, satu per empat yang pertama, satu per empat yang kedua, satu per empat yang ketiga, satu per empat yang keempat. First, second, third, fourth. Macam mana nak tahu first, second, third, fourth? Uh, follow anti-clockwise. Follow angle system. Inilah angle kan nama dia. So zero degrees, going here 90 degrees, going here 180 degrees. So follow the anti-clockwise. One, two, three, four. Okay. So the first quadrant tells you, so the first angle system is based off, you put the object in the first quadrant. Let's see. Hello. Okay. This is the object. You put it inside the first quadrant and then you map it. Okay, so the third angle, obviously, you already know, is in the third quadrant. Okay, so I want you guys to look closely here. Is you, If you can see here, you, the box, it covers the front, top, and side over here for the third quadrant, right? But for the first angle system, it covers the back, not the front. I was expecting it to cover the front over here, but it doesn't. It covers the back. So apart from being in the first quadrant, the way that they orient that box, the glass box also differs. So this one, it covers the back. The third angle covers the front. Why is this important? We're gonna see in a bit, okay? So the first angle system, okay, you have your object here and the third angle system, this is the glass box or like the planes that covers the object. Now let's see how they map it. So you, you are the viewer over here. Let's assume that's the front view. So they are mapping it at the back. They are mapping it at the back. Does it mean that they are using the back view uh, as the front view? No, they are still mapping the front but they're putting it at the back. I don't know why. It's just a convention. The first one that came up with it, he gets to decide. Okay, so we have um, this, let me see. We have this side and we have this small rectangle and then we have a slightly bigger rectangle. And we have this as our front view. It's exactly the same, but we plot it at the back. We map it at the back. Whereas for the third angle system, we project it towards the front, which makes more sense in my opinion. And I told you AutoCAD is very subjective. As long as you follow the convention, you are good. Okay. For the side view, again, they map it at the back, even though you, you're viewing something at the front. And then you have your hidden line. Okay, same case over here, but now they project it to the front. Okay, same case over here. I'm gonna make this faster a bit because we already know by at this point how it looks like. Okay, so you want you're telling me, okay, this looks exactly the same. Why does it matter? The ke belakang ke sama je kan? But no, when we cut it out, there the way that they cut it out is also different. So the way that they orient the views in the orthographic um, drawing is also different. So let's see. Okay, so this becomes, where's my pen? This becomes your front view, this becomes your top view, and this becomes your side view. Here, your top view is here. And this is your side view, and this is your top view. So in your drawing, typically your front view is at the, at this side, right? And then you go for the top, go for the side. But it's the different, it's different for the first angle system. And then you put your isometric view of the object on this side uh, versus the third angle system puts it over here. 
Okay, so again, I prefer the third angle system, but it's not wrong if you use the first angle system. Okay, so again, we typically put our front view here. The examples that we have seen use the third angle system. And it makes more sense to have the top view at the top, right? And the side view, the right side. This is right side, but it's on the left, which I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. So again, we have first angle and third angle system. Um, the one, the examples that we have seen in class typically are the third angle system. Okay. And for to complete your orthographic projection, sometimes they include the real object or the 3D object, isometric view of the object together with the uh, views. Okay. So view se sequence, this is your first angle. First angle view, third angle system. Okay. What's this? First angle projection, right view is on the left. Why is it so fast? Uh, good job. Okay. Top view, bottom of front view. Top view was at the bottom of the front view. That was so fast. Okay. Third angle projection, right view is. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to skip this one or not? Oh, this one is important. So when I have, I give you a drawing, right? And I put a little symbol like this on the top, on the top right. Okay, I put symbol like this. It means that it is the third angle. Need symbol um, international, right? You use this symbol to indicate this is a third angle system. You're using a third angle system. If you give me this symbol instead, it means that uh, it is the first angle projection or first angle system. Okay, so nanti kita akan tengok uh, kat mana dia lukis benda tu. Kecil je. So the first angle system again, it maps to the back. Let's see. Oh, ni dia, dia cerita macam mana kita dapat that symbol. So dia datang dengan objek ni, tak tahu kenapa dia pilih objek ni, tapi tak apa. So this is our object. It maps it to the planes. See, this is the side and this is the front view. Actually, it's the back view. And then they open the plane. This is what they have. This is the first angle system. And then for the third angle system, Oh, betul lah. Okay. So the front view is the circle. I mean, the first um, the first view is the circle. Okay, just remember that you start with a circle for your third angle system. Okay. This is not important. Uh, this is just scaling. So, oh, I think this is... Okay, so if you want to, let's say for your mini project later, you want to draw this symbol in your AutoCAD drawing, right? Because you want to indicate to me whether it's a third angle system or first angle system. If you want to draw it uh, really, really small, for example, you want to have the diameter of this guy, of the circle as one millimeter, then this side should extend by 2.2 millimeter. This side should be 1.7 millimeter. If you want to make it bigger, let's say two millimeter for the diameter, then this becomes 2.2 times two millimeter. And this becomes 1.7 times 2.2 millimeter. So please use the scale if you're gonna use um, if you're gonna scale it up or scale it down. Okay, so just use the convention. This lecture is going to be available to you. I mean the slides, so you can just refer to it. You don't have to memorize. Okay, so orthographic drawing steps. Let's take a five minute break. Yes, why not? Five minute break is 2.47. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If not, let's take our break. Draw 2.47. Come back. And I forgot, please record your attendance on Pucha Blast. If you have not.
no. I started the lecture already. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. Okay, so let's can start from the beginning. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so I always like um tengah be 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 pas exam. <laughs> okay, let me just repeat myself. Uh, so for test one, one of the possible questions is I give you an isometric view. You can hear me, right? Right now, am I muted still? No. Boleh dengar ke? Yes, so we can hear you. Boleh. Yes. Okay. So let's say I give you an isometric view. I ask you to draw the orthographic projection. Okay, that's one potential question. Or I can give you a uh, isometric view and I give you like, sorry, I give you an isometric view and also I give you the top and the side view and I ask you complete the missing front view. That's also an, a, a possible question. Or sometimes I can also give you the three multi views, the three views, the front, top and side. I ask you to draw the isometric with the dimensions. Okay, so those are the things that we we are trying to understand here and of course we have i have to test you guys on that as well because the your understanding of that translates to your autocad drawing as well later on okay so i have three chats over here i thought you just review not same oh okay so sorry about that tengah shot sendiri tadi ala petangan mengantuk sebenarnya okay tak apa tak apa Okay, let's continue. Uh, so okay. select the next. Yes. How is the exam going to be conducted? Like, what do we need? You okay, need like so the, the triangle. Exam, you need triangles. You don't need the triangles. You can bring your ruler. Um, I think having a ruler would be safe. Uh, to draw your projections later, mm, and pencil if you want to not if you want to rub it off. If you use a pen, then. You have to start all over again, right? So pencil, ruler, uh, everything is on paper. There's no AutoCAD yet. Um, but don't be disheartened because your AutoCAD mini mini project and also your group project has a lot of carry marks, but that is not going to be on the test, okay? So um, the concept that I will test you is about the lines, what type of lines should we use, um, how the multi views, how to draw axonometric drawing. Mm, what else have we covered in the lecture? What is the first and third angle system? Things like that. Okay, everything in the lecture is fair game mm, unless I tell you that you shouldn't focus on this topic. Okay. Is that okay? Does that answer the question? Hey, doctor, thank you. Okay. okay. So, um, kenapa tak test AutoCAD in the test one? Because um, in the syllabus, I have to test you on theory as well. And I can't test you on theory if uh, we're, I'm evaluating your AutoCAD uh, drawing later on. <clears throat> it's, so, I have to do the test um, like that. Okay. So, I don't want to do it like that, but I have to because it's part of the syllabus. Okay? And of course, if I don't test you like that, you won't read it, right? So, we have to. Okay, so how to start drawing your orthographic projection. First, select the necessary views. Do you want your front? Do you want your top? Do you want your side? Do we need right and left or do we just need right? So let's see. So first, I have this object. I'm going to pick the front view and the top view. I can put the side view, but I feel like the side view does not tell me uh, where the hole is situated. Of course, I'm going to see the hidden lines, right? I'm going to see the hidden lines and I'm going to see a center line. But I won't know that this guy is not actually a circle. I won't know it's a circle. Um, but from the top, I know, oh, this is um, an elongated oblong. Let's just call it oblong. And I can tell, oh, this guy is not actually a circle, but it has some sort of like a rectangular cut off, right? So if I look at it from the side, I won't be able to tell all, of, all those information. So the top view is necessary and also the front view because it tells me the height of the this guy over here. Okay, so let's see. Next is to lay out the views. So in here we have the dimensions. And obviously, if I if you were to draw this in your paper, 152 millimeter would not fit in your paper. Would it fit? I don't think so. 
So it's, let's say it's not gonna, gonna fit in your paper or your answer scheme punya tempat tu. So what you want to do is scale it down, scale it down, okay? Choose an appropriate scale. So you can choose one to one or, so if you were to choose one to one, then you would have to draw it um, according to scale lah kan? Typically we scale down lah. So if you were to have this as your front view and your, wait, what was it just now? So this is the front view dimension, 152 and 45. It's just giving you a block because they just want to estimate the place to draw. And then for the front view, sorry, the top view, it is 64 by 152. So this is the area that you will draw your top view. So they want to place it in the title block. It fits. So actually it fits. <laughs> I don't know. What's the size of our paper? I forgot already. Okay, so it fits. So you don't have to scale it down. Okay, so project the views. Just now we chose how to lay it out, right? First, we selected the views. Second, uh, look at the dimension. Would it fit in your A4 paper with the title block? And then you now you map it out. You map out the lines, you map out the points. Okay, so they start with the block here, right? The dimension of this side and this side. And they measured, I mean, the dimensions are going to be given. So what this person did was he just drew all the straight lines first before he started drawing the circles and arcs. Do you need your uh, compass? Uh, you can just sketch it, it's fine for your exam. As long as you show me it's a circle, don't, don't give me an eclipse or something. Ellipse, sorry, eclipse is the moon. Um, okay. And then you have to extend the line because you want the, you want the views to be the same length, right? So they are extending the lines. So later on, uh, because we did not cover this in lab, I'm going to give you guys exercises that you can do by yourself. And of course, I'm going to give you the solutions as well. So you can practice this one. So this is why I wanted to finish up the lecture this week so that we can do the exercises next week. Okay, so hidden line represents the circle, the hole. And then we have another hidden line that gives us uh, this cut out rectangular thing. And as you can see over here, we have this um, rectangular block extending a bit. Does anyone know why? Why is it not one surface? Why is it not one surface? Should it be a su one surface or should it be an edge? Remember, a visible line tells us that it is between two faces, right? Is this two faces or just one face? Dun, dun, dun. So you have to figure that out, okay? You have to figure out if um, the surface is one face or it's divided into two faces and if you need a visible line or not, okay? So that is the tricky part. And then from the front view, you need to have your hidden hidden uh, lines to indicate this guy over here, okay? I'm gonna go a little bit faster because it's the evening and I know you guys are dozing off. Okay, so you can put in your part name if necessary. If they don't give it to you, you don't have to put in anything. If you have any notes, put it here. Dimensions is in millimeters. And again, if you there is a thickness, you can use the leader line and indicate it's one millimeter in thickness or etc. Okay, and then this is where you put in your name, all the details that we discussed in, in the lab. Okay, 
And then you put in your dimension. Dimensioning, kita tak cover lagi. Kejap lagi kita cover. Okay, so you, as you can see here, you extend the line from here to here and the arrow goes inside. But when the, when the dimension is so small, your arrow can be outside. Your arrow can be outside. And you put in the value next to the arrow like this. This is for the Y. Okay, the arrow is outside, but it's actually indicating the dimension of this guy over here. If your line is big enough, you can fit in your arrow, then just put in your dimension on top of the arrow. What else? This one is okay, okay. Uh, this is another instance. This one is telling you the radius. Or you can use the radius or diameter. So Z is the radius of the arc is blah, blah, blah. Okay. And this one tells you the dimension of here to here. Okay. I think uh, dimensioning is fairly straightforward. The one that you have to take note is that when it is too small, your arrow can be outside. So if I give you a drawing like this and I ask you, um, what does, what is the size of the, the, the you have to remember that even though the arrow is outside, it doesn't mean that the dimension is outside. It is inside here. Okay, I think that's the that's the hardest part of dimensioning, I think. Okay. And then transferring the depth of dimension. So direct measurement. Let's see. Here's the they are trying to map it out to the side. Jump, let's see. Oh, betul. Sikitnya. Okay, go back. So here they are measuring that this side is the depth, right? Remember, uh, this is the width. The width. This guy tells us the depth. This guy tells us the height. The depth over here should be at the floor of the side. So they are measuring this and making sure that it is exactly the same length. Okay, so you do need your ruler. Sebab kena sama length kan? <clears throat> so 27. Then you draw it like normal. Okay, so here is another approach to draw the different views. Panas lah. To draw the different views using a meter line. So this is a new term, meter line. Eh? Meter line. Let's see what that is. So now you extend, first you extend from your front view, you're extending the line. You have your top view as well. Now you draw a 45 degrees, 45 degrees um, line. You need a, no, let's just uh, roughly estimate the 45 degrees. I don't think you need it because it's just one line, okay? Just make a rectangle, This the bisect that line okay bisect that line okay so 45 degrees and then you extend the line from the top view and you connect it downwards to make your side view okay so now you have the dimensions already and now you can draw it you can sketch it out okay so i'm going to design the question for you to just use the ruler if i need you to use the meter line i'm going to give you guys the angle don't worry about that okay but here they're telling us the view is too close. So what do we do? We try to move it a little bit away. So which is easy, just move it away a little bit and connect the lines. Just like a mirror. Eh? You can think of this like mancar. Memantul, sorry. Dia pantul. Konon-konon lah. Okay. You have a mirror over here. Uh, this is the light. They pancarkan, they pantulkan light to the other side. Okay. So this is using a meter line. It helps you to draw precisely for the side view, given that you have the front and the top. Okay. So what is a possible question from this? I give you this. I give you a front view and a top view. I ask you, uh, using the meter line, draw the side view. That's a possible question. Okay, basic dimensioning. Now we're going into dimensioning. So we have the first one, extension line, dimension line, leader line. 
I already uh, introduced you a little bit on leader line, dimension numbers, and also local notes. Local notes, we also um, saw one just now. Dimension is in millimeters. That was a note as well. Thickness is one millimeter. That was also a note. Okay, so what is extension line? It's basically uh, just extending from your drawing. It doesn't have to extend from a visible line. It can also extend from a center line. So when you boleh asalkan it helps you to draw the other views. Okay, and then your dimension line goes inside the extension line unless your extension line gap is too small, like I mentioned to you before. Again, dimension line goes inside the extension lines unless the gap between the extension line is too small. Okay, then we have the leader line. Leader line tells us notes. For example, this leader line tells us the diameter or the radius of this circle. So you use a leader line, do not use dimension line. So you can put the diameter symbol and indicate 25. So I know, oh, this circle is 25 in diameter. Done. Okay, and then dimension numbers. Put it on top of your um, dimension lines. And then local notes. You can put it like this. This one tells you the radius. This one tells you this circle has needs to use a 10 drill with two holes. Sorry, a 10 drill size for the two holes, I believe. Okay, so macam mana nak bezakan dimension line and leader line? Leader line, dia akan ada this horizontal part. So if you are doing the dimension, don't put the horizontal part like that. I mean, this is slightly slanted and it is connected to a horizontal part, right? Don't draw your dimension like this. It's wrong. The leader line is all only for notes. Okay? So you have to remember all these lines. Very important for your AutoCAD project later on and also for your test. Okay. So let's take a five-minute break. Because <laughs> I'm tired. Okay, five-minute break. What time would that be? 3.08 will be 3.013. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Need to write that somewhere. Oh, let's watch a video. Okay. Stop sharing. Let's go to Putra Blast. Putra Zapman, Putra Blast. It's a big class, I banyak siang. I mean, pagi. I really don't like evening classes. Uh, three o sorry, three two o one. Let's watch this video. Share the screen. Okay, so this video is on your Putra Blast. Okay, so you can refer to it back again if you want. So I really like this video. It tells you how to draw um, from multi view to isometric view. So let's see. Let me make this bigger. I will be showing an example of how to go from a standard three view orthographic projection into an isometric view. So the first thing I want to review is for a standard three view orthographic projection, we have a front view, a top view, and a side view. And when we go to create our isometric view, we need to make sure we have those views oriented correctly. So our front view is going to be put into this plane. This is the block, the standard block uh, that we've talked about. Here, the front view 
is going to go in this section. So we're going to be viewing the front view would be as if we're viewing it this way. Side view from this way and the top view this way. So that's what, what we're going to want to do. So we're going to take this front view, put it here, side view there, top view, tie to the top, and we'll create our isometric cube. So I'm going to switch this paper around, and we're going to do this example. So here is my example, just a simple block with a hole in it, and there's actually an inclined plane on the top. It is drawn on our standard graph paper. And I have isometric graph paper here on the right where I'm going to do my view. So remember, the first thing is, is I'm going to take a look at it from this way and create our front view. Our front view is going to be based off of here. Looking at this drawing, we can see this since it's top and this on the top and on the side view, the front is planar. So this whole front face here is a planar surface. So I'm gonna start drawing that from a point. So I'm gonna pick this point right down here, down uh, at the bottom left corner, and just put that on my isometric graph paper. Now I can start working my way around here. So I have a vertical line that's going up. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, scale one to one. So I'm gonna go six units up, one, two, three, four, five, six. From this point, I'm going to draw horizontally. Then there is a horizontal line here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units down or to the right. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units there. Now, if I go around here, uh, I can go up. That's three and that's vertically up. So I'm going to go right on the isometric graph paper lines right to there. Now I need to draw this slanted line. That slanted line, how do I draw that in there? Because it doesn't line up with a hor my vertical, my vertical lines or my horizontal lines on my isometric graph paper. Well, the way that we do uh, these types of lines is that we need to know this endpoint and we need to know this endpoint. Well, this point right here corresponds to this point right there. And this point on the right side corresponds to this point right here. Well, if I take a look at this, there's a straight line in our orthographic front view. So it's going to be a straight line in our isometric view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a straight edge. Or in this case, I have a simple ruler. And I'm going to draw a straight line between those two points. And there we have that front view. We're still missing the circle. I'll put that in a little bit. We're going to go and get the rest of the object completed. So what do we need to do now? We need to incorporate the side view and the top view in here. So if we take a look at this, we take a look at the object and we see that it has a depth of two, depth of two. So from this point here, which is directly under the front point, we have a depth of two. So I'm going to go and draw a depth of two units. And down here, I can look at the side view and I see that it has a depth of two, which is consistent. And it, on the bottom edge, there's a straight edge here. So I'm going to just draw that over two units. But now in the side view, I can see that there's a line here. And then we know from before we can project over, there's going to be a straight horizontal line at this point. So up three, there's going to be a horizontal line that's too deep. So one, two, and then from the side view, I can see that that is coming straight down. So I can draw that. Now that is that right side face. Now again, I'm gonna have this slanted line that needs to go back here. And again, I can tell that it is a straight line because the front view, I don't see any other lines. It's hidden right behind this line. So those two lines are gonna be parallel. All I need to know is the endpoints, which is here and here, there and there. Take my straight edge and I'll be able to create this line. Right there. Now we've blocked out our basic shape. So the only thing that we're missing is this circle here. And this circle, we can see that it exists in the top view. We have hidden lines there. We have a center line indicating that this is a, a circular or cylindrical object. Um, a cylindrical object because we only have one center line. Here we have a circular object. We have two center lines. And on the right view or in the side view, we have a center line and we have a hidden line here, but we don't see the hidden line here. Remember, this is a solid line because of the order of precedence of our lines. 
the visible line is always takes higher order or higher precedence than a hidden line. There is a hidden line behind this, but what we're going to see is the visible line. So let's go in and draw the circle. How do we draw these circles? This is another thing that I'd like um, you to, to do uh, with some precision or learn how to do this. This circle in our orthographic projection is a true circle. When we go into our isometric view, it is not going to be a circle, but it's going to be an ellipse. And I'm not very good at drawing ellipse just by freehand, so I need to set some construction up. In the book, they talked about this also. So let's go through and how do we do this? First thing we're going to do is we're going to locate the center of this circle. Well, I'm going to locate it relative to this bottom point. It's two over to the right, two up is the center of that circle. So if I locate this point, this point's right here, I'm gonna go two units to the right, two units up, and I'm gonna put a dot right there. That's gonna be the center of my circle. Now we need to draw our box that encases our circle. So our radius of our circle is one unit, and I can see that it's one unit all the way around here. So I'm gonna actually put four dots. I'm gonna come up one, the radius, put a dot, right one, radius, there's a dot, down and to the left. Now those are our four quadrant locations. And now I'm going to draw my box. Since it's a front view, our lines are gonna go this way. So now I can put my box around there. Now, if we were doing this for an actual drawing, we'd wanna draw that. I have it in pen just so it shows up a little bit better for you in the video, but we would use a pencil or something light. We could erase those off later. So now we have our bounding box of where our circle is going to fit into. I've got my quadrant uh, points drawn here. And now I'm going to need to draw four arcs. Four arcs are going to go between these quadrant points. So there's going to be one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now, the way I like to start is on these two corner angles, these opposite ones that are acute or less than 90 degrees. Those are going to be tight, tight arcs. Now, these arcs are going to be tangent from this, this quadrant point. It's, that arc is going to be tangent to this line. And when I finish at this quadrant point, it's going to be tangent to this line. So I'm going to just draw those in. And that is a tight arc right there. That arc is going to be the same down here on the opposite side. So tangent, tangent. I'm just going to draw that in there just like that. Now I have two more arcs. These ones are going to be on the obtuse or the greater than 90 degree angles. And again, it's going to be tangent on this quadrant point, tangent down here. I'm just going to draw that in, draw this one in like that, just reinforce my lines. And that is what the ellipse would look like. Now you can erase this box off at this point, but for these drawings, what you're going to do for your homework, that's okay. You can leave those on there. I'll be able to understand it. I want you to be able to go through this process and be able to draw those uh, on there. Now, there's one other question that we have here is, will we see the backside, this backside circle in our view here? Is it going to be able to be seen? Sometimes we might be able to see the back edge of this circle in here. So how do we figure that out? Well, what we're going to do is we have to draw that backside circle, even though we can't see it here, we need to kind of see where is it and if it's visible through this cutout in the hole. So what we're going to do is on the back surface, we're going to locate the center of the circle. Well, the center of that circle is two to the right and two up from this corner. But on the back corner, that's that back corner back over there. And so now we kind of have to find that back corner. It's kind of hidden down here. That back corner actually falls right here. Actually, it's, it's coincident with the the... Uh, center of our circle. And we need to go back, we can go over to and up to, and we can locate the center right there. That's one way to do it. The other way, if that was a little confusing for you, is that the center of this circle is going to be two units. The thickness of this object is two units. So the center is going to be two units to the right or two units deep. So from this point, we can go two units in depth to find that center. So that may be a little bit easier for you to, to follow also. So at this point, we have this circle. Now remember, we're not gonna see this circle at all unless it's visible through this part. So everything that we're gonna draw in here shouldn't be in our drawing at all. So we're gonna do it very lightly. 
and if you have a pencil, this would be a good time to just do a rough light outline. But we're going to draw the same ellipse. Radius one, so we're going to go up one, over one, down one, to the right, uh, to the left one. We could lightly draw in this box. I know it's almost too light to see on the video there. And our ellipse would fall inside of that box. Well, we can see our ellipse inside of that box does not overlap our other ellipse. So we're not going to see any sort of back edge inside of here. So at this point, we can stop, we can erase those lines, and we're good to go. So now we have our final isometric view of uh, isometric view of our standard three view orthographic projection. Yay. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, since, uh, you need to go through the process so that we can, can do well in the exam. I'm going to give you exercises later on. Okay, uh, let's continue. So let's continue for another, let's see. Let's continue until this like, uh, slide is uh, habis. Eh? Okay, so next, last topic for today, tangencies and intersections. Tangencies and intersections. You know what tangent is. It is when you have a circle and the line intersects the circle, not intersect, like is at the edge of the circle. Or vice versa, you have a line and the circle touches the line. So that is your tangent. Okay, so tangent and intersection. No line is formed when curved surface tangent is tangent to a plane surface. For example, um, this is your front view of this object. From the top, you don't see any line, even though, even though I need to. Okay, this is your object, this is your front view, and this is your side view, and this is your top view. So the tangent, the line is tangent to the arc over here. So they are tangent and it forms one surface, right? Because it's a tangent. So when you have something that is only one face, you don't have an edge. Therefore, there will be no visible line. Even though from the front view, you see something like, oh, this looks like two different uh, sides, but it's not because it's one surface. As long as it is a tangent, a line tangent with circle, it's one surface. There's no visible line or no edge, okay? From the side, you get your um, you get your height and also your wait, you get your depth, right? You get your depth, and also this one tells you your height, this one tells you your width, this one tells you your height, and this one tells you your depth. So again, there's no line over here because it is just one surface, no line on the side view. Moving on. Okay, this is another example. This is, um, okay, is this a tangent or not a tangent? Would you call this a tangent or not? This cut out arc. If we were to construct this in AutoCAD, do I need to use the function 10, 10 arc? Was it 10, 10 arc? Yeah. Or was it tangent, tangent radius? It was tangent, tangent radius. So do I need to use that uh, specific line in my AutoCAD to do this? Let's try to imagine. How would I construct this using AutoCAD? Using arc. You're just going to use arc. No 10, 10 radius? Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. So here you can see that the line does not, the, the straight line does not align with the edge of the circle. The one knee edge circle though is not, it's not overlapping. Compared to this guy, this is the edge of the circle. Kat luar circle eh. Luar circle dia kena bersambung dengan line. That is a tangent. This luar circle is not aligned to the line. So it's not a tangent. It's just a cut out arc. So betul. You can um, make an arc and then you can trim it later. Trim it afterwards. Okay. So from this, from the side, you only see the height and the depth. And from this side, you only see the width and the height. The, only the front view tells you that there is, no, there's supposed to be a line over here. Let's see, intersect, so there is an edge. Okay, so it's different compared to a tangent. 
So how can you tell? Uh, this one is one face. This is one face. If you have an, if you have two faces, there must be an edge. Okay, and an edge translates to a visible line in the drawing. Okay, so intersection pula ketanjil lagi. Okay, tangent lagi. So here, let's take a look over here. Is this a tangent or not a tangent? The top part. Anyone? I think this is quite easy. Is it a tangent or not tangent? Not doctor. It's not a tangent. Hmm. Is. Hmm. I feel like this is a tangent, but this one is not. Good job. It's quite confusing. So this one is slanted. It's not exactly an arc. Or oh, this one is also not a perfect arc. As you can see here, it's horizontal and then it drops. So this is looking more like a fillet rather than an arc, right? Color arc is like a circle, but a fillet is, it is an arc, but the lines uh, dominate over the arc. The arc is just small. Fillet is small arc. When we have a large arc, then the line overlaps the arc, then we can say that it is a tangent. Okay, that is just definitions. Okay, let's see. This is a tangent. This is also a tangent because it's smooth, but this is not a tangent. So here you can see there is a visible line because this is two faces. But here, they said this arc is, this arc overlaps with the line. This arc overlaps with the line and it is tangent. So I believe them. I thought it was a tangent before. But from here, it doesn't look very much like a tangent. Nampak tak? Gambar sini macam tak tangent. Dia macam, macam slope. Slope, uh, apa nama dia? Tebing? No. Slope lah. Okay, it looks like a slope rather than an arc over here. But from here, it looks like this is an arc and this is a line. Okay. So from the top, when you have a tangent, it doesn't uh, translate as an edge. Therefore, it's just one face or one surface. Okay. In comparison to this guy over here, uh, this is quite obvious that this is not a tangent. Let's see. So you have that intersect, you have that edge over there, and you have a plane. Oops, again. So what is the difference between this guy and this guy? Here you don't have a straight plane. That's the difference. Here you have a vertical plane, which translates as your visible line, because it has to map out somewhere. But for this guy, it's slanted, so you can't really map it upwards, right? Not map macam mana? Okay, at the angle. But this one is vertical, so you actually can extend the line. Therefore, if you can extend it, then it can either be a hidden line or a visible line. And you can't really translate this fillet unless you show the front view. Okay, and then this one is fairly straightforward. This side over here also is not reflected on the side view. Okay, so you do really need this front view. Okay, so what can we conclude from this slide? This side over here, you don't have, you can't extend a line. So from here, we can say that this is a smooth surface. It's just one surface. And this is a tangent. Versus this guy over here, you can actually extend the line. It is a straight plane or a vertical plane. Therefore, um, if you look at it from the top, you can see that it cuts downwards, right? Versus when you see from the top, this one is just smooth. You can't really see a clear cut where it ends. So there's no edge over here. There's no visible line. Okay. So here there's about limiting element. Eh? Limiting element means what you see. From the top is what you see. Even though you can't see the fillet, but you can see the drop here. So you have to represent it in your top view. Okay. I think this is the last slide, hopefully. Yes. Okay. So we have this object. Uh, it's a cylindrical block connected to a rectangular block and it is cut over here. 
Okay, so the center line represents that this is a circle. We know this. What else? So here, remember I asked you why is this not a smooth line? Because, sorry, why is this um, represented with an edge and not a smooth surface or a single face? Because it's not a tangent. Again, you have to align the outer edge of your circle with the line to have a tangent. This is not a tangent. Tengok sini, tak bukan tangent eh. Kalau ada tangent, macam ni. Ay, banyak gila. Kalau ada tangent, macam ni. This is a tangent. This is a tangent. This is a tangent. When it is like this, it's not a tangent lah. Okay. At a drop. You don't have, you cannot have that drop. You, you draw your line, there's a drop. No, you cannot have that. If you have your line, you want it to be tangent, there should not be any drop. It should be straight line. Sampai, kita sampai ke arc ni. Okay. Continue. Okay, last one, eh? focus. So this is our front view over here. We have to represent the visible line here because Obviously, it's a not, there is a boundary here, right? So we have to present that with a visible line. And then we have our center line, which tells us that this is a circle or a cylinder. And then we have our line over here, as I mentioned before. And they are using meter line to draw the side view. Okay, first you extend the lines from the top view. This is 45 degrees, you can extend it over here. You can make it closer, but better uh, away a bit from the top view. And then from here, you ex also extend the lines and you connect them. Okay, let's see. Okay, so you draw your side view. Okay, so the extension lines tells you, gives you like a guide, okay? But yeah, eventually you have to draw it yourself. Okay, the center line from this side tells you it's a cylinder. Okay, so different from the first object, now our line is actually tangent, actually tangent to the circle because there is no drop. I'm just going to call it drop. Straight line and terus masuk circle. Yang ni dia ada drop dulu. Tak tahu lah macam mana cerita tu. Tapi I think you guys understand. Okay, so you you don't have that line as you had previously before because this one is two faces but when it is tangent, it is a single surface. Even though you have this top part but this side is a single surface. Smooth. So no line. And use your meter line to draw the side view. Make your extension line as your guide and draw your side view. Okay, so from this side, we can see that the rectangular part is sampai hujung circle. So what you see is just two rectangular things. Okay. And last example, I hope this one. This one is not rectangular. It's slightly slanted. So a little bit challenging here. So the top view is like this, okay? This is still a tangent. There is no drop, it's smooth, okay? You can draw the line and it connects the arc immediately. So again, there's no line. Okay, meter line, make the side view, same case over here. But now we have two, we have two edges that we have to account for. One is the smaller edge, sorry, the smaller side over here. And then we have to put the lines at the side over here as well. Okay. What the leggy? Last one. So this is not a symmetrical object. It's, as you can see over here, it's, it's, it's straight over here, but it's slanted here. Okay, so how do we represent it? Okay, still a smooth line because it's a tangent. From here, from here to here is a tangent. From here to here is also a tangent. Okay. No lines, yes. 
meter line, make your guidelines or your extension line to guide you to draw and you extend it. And here your small part here is over here. How did you know it was here? You have to have your extension line as your guide. Abyss. Abyss, yay. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I thought I wanted to cover two lectures, but even myself, I cannot cope. <laughs> okay, so let's continue next class. So for Thursday, we are having lab, the usual AutoCAD. So please come to lab on Thursday, okay? I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow, stats class. Bye, guys. Have a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Welcome.